Welcome to MyStars Unit 8.4, Plotting a Cosmic Collision Course. This video gives a big picture look into Unit 8.4. The semester unifying cross-cutting concept is scale, proportion, and quantity. Unit 8.4 is about how objects move when far away from Earth's surface, and in particular in Earth's solar system. The concepts and ideas addressed will be quite challenging to your students for three main reasons. Number one, it is hard to observe firsthand the motion of objects in our solar system. You've certainly noticed that when we look into the night sky, most objects, like the moon, planets, and stars, look like they aren't moving at all. The number two reason is that the way objects move in space is not the same as we observe here on Earth. Let go of a wrench on Earth and it drops straight to the ground. Push an object like a toy car into motion and it always comes to rest. Far from Earth's surface, objects behave differently. This makes rules such as Newton's laws of motion seem like they don't apply the same everywhere, even though they do. The third reason for this material being so challenging springs from the first two, and it is that students must think abstractly to apply earthbound observations to the motion of objects in space. Students will be asked to piece together their observations as clues, and then use these together with modeling, readings, videos, and classroom discussion to arrive at the rules which govern the motion of all objects. The 8.4 unit challenge scenario is centered around an unidentified object moving through space and headed this way. Will there be a catastrophic collision between the object and Earth? Working with a fictional NASA team, students will act as interns as they learn how scientists and engineers find and identify unknown space objects, learn about their trajectory, and assess potential danger to Earth. This challenge is, as always, introduced in Lesson 1. Now, let's look at the middle lessons. In the first two middle lessons, students investigate what objects exist in our solar system and how we use models to visualize and show others how these objects are moving. In lessons four through seven, students look more closely into the motion of solar system objects. They notice how they move in continuous circles and how the motion of various objects is similar and different. Some questions that students grapple with are, why do all these objects move in the way that they do? What forces govern their motion? How did the solar system form and get set into motion in the first place? In the last middle lesson, students decide if and how they can predict the motions of objects and then predict whether or not the unidentified space object will collide with Earth. Now that we have an overview of the unit, let's look at each lesson separately to see how the content and ideas flow and fit together. For the first lesson, students are introduced to the challenge and then work to develop the first iteration of the unit bubble map. And this is revisited and updated during the unit as students achieve greater understanding. This image of an initial unit bubble map came from our pilot testing. The questions in it give the teacher the chance to see some initial student thinking, as well as to determine how to move smoothly to the first middle lesson of the unit. The lesson discovery question is, what objects are in space and how do we know what they are? Can you identify some similar questions? Pause the video if you need to. Although the exact question isn't on the map, and this is usually the case, there are several questions that are similar and can help transition to lesson two. Lesson two, what's out there? Students classify unknown space objects according to their characteristics. 
such as shape and brightness. They use this skill to narrow down the identity of the mystery object as either an asteroid or a comet. In Lesson 3, students analyze a number of solar system models in order to discover that different models are useful for different purposes. Students also learn that scale and proportion are difficult to model accurately in solar system models. In the Connect phase, students are provided with NASA's predicted motion path of the mystery object and determine that it is most likely an asteroid. Lesson 4 is about motion. It addresses why space objects keep moving continuously without stopping. This is contrary to what students observe in their everyday lives, where objects always tend to slow down and come to rest. There are three uncover share phases in this lesson to scaffold student learning. First, students conduct an investigation observing a hockey puck sliding on different surfaces to explore how the surface affects the distance the puck travels. Next, they create force models of the puck in motion. In the third uncover share, students watch video showing a bowling ball and feathers being dropped in air and then in a vacuum chamber to consider the difference in the forces acting on the objects. These experiences are all used in the connect phase to help students construct explanations for the motion of Earth and the asteroid in space. In lesson five, round and round they go, students observe and use force modeling to investigate four phenomena which involve circular motion. They discover that space objects, which stay in motion due to their inertia, travel in relatively circular orbits around other space objects due to gravity. In the connect phase, students make a model to help understand what forces are acting on Earth and on the asteroid to make them orbit the Sun continuously in a circle. In lesson six, gravity rules, students investigate the force of gravity exerted between Earth and various objects in order to draw some conclusions about the rules of gravity. They test these rules using an online computer simulation. In the connect phase, students use modeling principles to examine and visualize how mass is distributed in the solar system. In teams, they apply their knowledge about gravitational forces from the previous phases to write an explanation for how the Sun holds the asteroid and Earth in orbit. Students begin Lesson 7 by looking for patterns of scale. Remember, this is the first unifying cross-cutting concept for the 8th grade. Students look into the motion and shape of several space phenomena, like those shown here. Do you see similarities in the shapes of these images? Students also determine that revolving objects need some initial force to put them in motion. In the second uncover share, using perlite and water in a bowl, they test a variety of initial forces to observe the results then compare their observations of this model to a widely accepted scientific theory about the formation of the solar system called nebular theory. In the connect phase, students use a video featuring Neil deGrasse Tyson to generate a claim, evidence, and reasoning for the origin and formation of the asteroid that is threatening Earth. In lesson eight, the last middle lesson, Students examine a variety of position versus time diagrams to learn about making predictions as to where a moving object will be at some future time. For the connect phase, students use a position versus time diagram to make a prediction about whether the asteroid and the Earth will collide. For the unit closer, students script and conduct scientific interviews. 
Some students will act as journalists, while others as NASA scientists and engineers. The questions and answers in these interviews, along with the visual aids produced, provide a fun and engaging way for students to publicly display all they've learned about this very challenging content. Unit 8.4 also addresses career opportunities, so students are exposed to these career opportunities related to the challenge and can further investigate how such careers can be pursued. At this point, we hope you're excited by this unit, but also understand if you feel overwhelmed. Rest assured that each lesson is carefully scaffolded and includes sufficient resources to render the content accessible for your students. We hope this will be a fun and fulfilling unit for everyone. Thank you for using MyStar to help your students thrive.